Hello and welcome back to A Splash of Paint. Now it's time to rejoin Terry Chip as he puts the final finishing touches to today's Try Your Hand Art Acrylics project. Enjoy. Right, well, a little earlier we got the paint into the halfway stage with the mid-tones and shadows in. The next step is to get the lighter tones in to complete the balance. Now, for this I'm going to use, again, uh, the yellow ochre and white. I'm really bringing that light up now, so plenty of white. I've always moistened my brush so the paint doesn't stick to the brush, but I don't like to add too much water to the paint. I like to keep it uh, reasonably thick. So I'm going to begin with lots of white. I always underestimate the white, so I try to remind myself to keep plenty in there. And then we're going to pick up these lighter parts of this stonework. I'm just going to dab little bits in there and then smudge it along. You know, I don't want it to be even, I don't want to be fancy brushwork or anything like that. I just want to get a rough idea of where the line might just catch on those and then drag it down. Okay. Perhaps that's a bit down there because I want to contrast with the shadow as well. Uh, these window ledges are going to catch a lot of the sunlight, I reckon. So, plenty on there. So, I'm not getting into the window ledge a bit, little bit there. Again, a bit to contrast with that. And I want to bring this curve let the light into the window. Okay. A little bit just to bring this corner out as well. It's really just a balancing process this, trying to get a, a range of colours. And the smudging with my thumb has the effect of bringing up the textures behind which if I use a brush I would just hide those textures I think. Right. Okay. And as I said before I like the colours to reappear elsewhere in the picture as well so I've lightened that up I'm now going to catch just the edge of one of these cracks and bring that forward a little bit. Fairly subtle change of colour just there. Bring a bit more light into some parts of it. We come down this inside edge, so that's sticking out a little bit. And again just smudge it away into the background. Just a bit of rough brushwork over those peaks. You can see how it's bringing up the texture each time. Helps it to look rather weathered. And we'll have a bit of that light up here as well, I think. It's going to be almost a dry brush technique now. I'm running out of paint. But uh, just scratching a little bit across those areas to lighten it up that little bit more and bring up the textures. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of the lighter colour above the window here. Again, just try to emphasise this crack that I put in. Hard edges and soft edges, that's the way to make it stand out. Okay. Then, that's established that. I could work for a lot longer playing with those uh, lights and darks on there. But what I want to do now is to get the plant. I'd, I've drawn this plant pot in the window. So I'm going to make a little terracotta colour with burnt sienna, naphthol red and yellow ochre. And that should give me, if I get the balance right, some terracotta colour for my plant pot. Just want 
take long to get that in. A little bit darker perhaps, put a bit of burnt umber into that for the more shadowed part. So that's got to disappear into the shadow behind there. And in the same way, some white into there to bring up the light as the sunlight just catches that edge of the plant pot. Right. I can tidy up the edges of that. Now I've got those lights and darks in. It's all going to be hidden by uh, foliage anyway. The next step is the foliage. I always put the dark foliage, the stuff that's hidden in the shadows first. So I'm going to start with quite a deep blue. I'm going to use yellow ochre rather than the naphthol red, rather than the um, arillamide yellow. The yellow ochre. And I'm just going to put some deep dark greens, just blotches in the background there. Give it, give us a background of darker colours. Then introduce some of the arillamide to brighten that up. And I'll put some leaves that are more to the foreground. Just little flicks of colour. I'm not being too precise about this by any means. And then as they come right out into the daylight, we get some white onto that and some of these are actually catching the light and standing out, coming down in front of the plant pot. Um, that's another one up there. And to finish that little episode, we'll have some nice bright flowers. What kind of flowers these are, I have no idea. I, I'm just, they're nice, bright, cheerful red things that look a bit like geraniums. Uh, horticulturalists can do much better than this, I'm sure, but that will just cheer it up a little bit. And then we can just put a few little, um, I always go for the Trechikov bit, you know, where you get the little bit of fallen petal on the window ledge there. Always adds a little bit of interest. And then, having got that far, that is the basis of the picture. The next step is to sort of stand back and have a good look at it and think, right, where does it need balancing? What else do I need to do to tidy that up? And that process can take hours or days. But for the moment, I would say I need to neaten up some of these shadows um, by painting either side of them Bring up the light a little bit there. That's got a little bit lost. And this area down here has got lost as well, so I want to bring that back up. Um, little edge catching on this bit of plaster there as it comes down. And perhaps through the broken plaster I can see a little bit of um, brickwork. So a little bit of warmth in there, paint some bricks in. Again, just a smudge of warmth really, I don't I don't want it too bright, I don't want it too clear, but just enough to suggest that that crack in the plaster work has revealed something. Um, I could put a similar crack under there, I suppose, as well. Uh, final, it looks a bit empty in the middle there, a little bit more of the mid green perhaps, just to fill that gap. Make it look a little bit more solid. And of course, when you get the plant sticking out like that, the plant itself is going to cast a shadow, so I need to come back with the shadow colour again. Burnt umber, thalo blue, 
and just darkening behind the plant there. It's going to cast a shadow onto that wall and there will be odd little shadows cast by leaves and things coming down there. As I say, I could work on that for quite a while now, just tidy up little bits, balancing, putting fiddly bits in. But the bulk of the painting is done and the rest is done at your leisure. Thanks for that, Terry. It's great to see how mid-tones and shadows can help bring a painting to life. Well, folks, before we take a little break, we've just got time to join popular art instructor and versatile artist Max Gidmore as he shows us what's in his box. Um, now I'm just going to talk a little bit about the kind of essentials, the uh, what's in my box bit of, um, of the programme. And um, I've got several things here. I had to think quite hard about this because I don't actually use anything that's particularly unusual. Um, I just have things that um, I can't function without. Um, so I'm going to start with, um, start with my phone. Uh, not because it's a phone, but because I can play music on it. And um, one of the things I find that is very strange really is that um, depending upon how I feel about a particular painting I can normally find some music to suit so if if something's going really well and I'm getting quite excited because I can see that somewhere down the line this is going to turn into um, a great picture um, I tend to put on music that is really going for it um, if I'm feeling a bit troubled and a bit beaten up um, in the process of, uh, of, of my painting I'll put something on a bit melancholy. So, um, yeah, music is an essential partner to everything I do. Um, and in fact, my wife will come into the studio and depending upon the music that's playing, she knows which me she's going to encounter. Uh, the next thing that's, that's uh, quite important to me are, um, are uh, these little beauties, uh, cotton buds. Now, I can't tell you which brand I use, but they do have a blue handle. And... Um, this particular company, I did write to them once to tell them that I promoted their product to, um, to all of the various art groups I went to, to say, well, I use these because they don't bend, therefore you can apply a lot more pressure. And um, I got a phone call from my wife one day when I was out to say there was an articulated lorry outside with a large supply, in fact a pallet full, of these particular items. So I told my sons, um, you're not going to get much in the way of inheritance, but I will be giving you a couple of million cotton buds. So um, think yourselves lucky. Um, and I use these for all sorts of things, taking paint off, putting paint on, dotting with them, um, drawing with them, drawing into the paint with them. I use them for all manner of things. And I find they're particularly useful when I want to take paint off that's, that's got, got in the way. Because if I roll them, it will generally pick all the paint up and there you go. And I also use them to soften the edges of colour. Just gently going around the edge, I can push it about until it blends into the background. Well, then I've got my, uh, my dear old mild stick. Um, I made this when I was at art college in the 70s. And so I've got to say something about this because it's about the only thing that I've got that I haven't lost or broken. Uh, during the course of my life, because I seem to be quite good at that. So this has stood the test of time. Um, I use it all the time now. In fact, I use it more now than I used to, because I've got this, this, um, this kind of twitch in my arm I get these days, and uh, it can get a bit, um, bit troublesome. So I find with my mild stick in place and my arm on it, I can generally beat off the twitches. Um, and then finally, um, it's kind of obvious really to say, the most important thing that I have are, are my fingers. Um, I suppose you could say my eyes ought to be in that mix as well, but my fingers because I draw with them, I paint with them, I smudge with them, um, I do everything with them. And um, they're an essential part of my painting kit. So a cotton bud, my fingers and a paintbrush, and I'm a long way down the line. So there you go, that's my essentials. Now it's time for our final break, but join us in part four when popular oil artist Warren Seeley returns to demonstrate a little bit of black magic and I'll be helping solve a few more of your artistic problems. <laughs> 